Hello, welcome to the Introduction to Proofs video for Cardinality, Examples. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to determine the relative cardinality of two sets, and you should be able to prove that all intervals have the same cardinality. Our motivation is, now that we know the definitions for relative cardinality, how do you actually compare cardinalities of actual given sets? So that's what we're going to look at today. Let's start with an example. Let E be the collection of positive even integers, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Show that the cardinality of the naturals is equal to the cardinality of the evens. So show that these two sets have the same cardinality by constructing a bijection from one to the other. Take a moment to do this now. So one way to do this would be to take the function f from the naturals to the evens defined by 2n. This is clearly a bijection from the naturals to the evens, so then that means they have the same cardinality. It's an exercise for you to check that this is both an injection and a surjection. Now let's look at a more sophisticated example. Let a be the set of integers from 1 to 2020. Show that the cardinality of a is less than or equal to the cardinality of the reals, and show that their cardinalities are not equal. The first one's going to be a little bit easier. The first one is automatic. Since the set a is a subset of the reals, we automatically get that the cardinality of a is less than or equal to the cardinality of the reals. We saw that in a previous set of slides. Now, showing that the cardinalities are not equal is much more challenging. So what do we need to do to show that their cardinalities are not equal? Well, you need to show that there's no bijection from A to R. So to show that there's no bijection, let's start with a function. And our goal is to show that this function can't be a surjection. That will be enough to tell us that there's no bijections because there aren't even any surjections. Now, if we start with this function, how are we going to show that it's not a surjection? Well, we need to find an element of the reals that doesn't get hit by f. So let's find a real number y that's not in the range of f. Now, I know what you're thinking. You might say, oh, well, this set A is finite, and the reals is an infinite set. Therefore, of course, they don't have the same cardinality. But that's sort of um, putting the cart before the horse. We're trying to prove right now that finite sets and infinite sets don't have the same cardinality. So we can't use that fact to prove that fact. So how can we show, how can we find a real number in the, in, well, in the reals uh, that isn't hit by this f? Now, th I think this is often a challenging part for students. So what I want you to do right now is think of a function, think of maybe three or four functions that go from the set A to the set of reals. And what's something that's bigger than all of them? Well, one thing um, that you can't do is you can't just say like a number. You can't just say, ah, I don't think a million is going to be in the range. Well, you don't know that because your function might output a million. So you need to define this y in terms of the function. So one way to do this is to take the maximum of all the outputs and then add one. So will this be in the range of f? Definitely not, because this value y is bigger than all of the outputs of f. So y isn't in the range. So this gives us an example of a real number that isn't in the range of the function. Now let's move on to intervals. Intervals provide a very interesting set of examples and a good place to work with cardinality. So our goal is if A is a real number less than B and C is a real number less than D, then the cardinality of the closed interval AB is the same as the cardinality of the closed interval CD. So take a moment right now to prove these one by one. So do this right now. Show each of these four things one at a time.
All right, hopefully you've had a chance to work on that. For the first one, this is a shift over one unit. For the second one, it's a scale by two. And already something's interesting here because this is an example where the length is one and the length is two, but they have the same cardinality. So this tells us that length and cardinality are not related. For the third one, we need to scale it up by two and then shift over one. And for the fourth one, now instead of going from one to three, we're going from A to B. So how did this number and this number relate to uh, the left end point and the right end point? Well, the plus one is the plus A, and this two is right end point minus left end point. It's the scaling factor. So hopefully by working with these simpler examples, this other one was easier to come up with. Now, how do we conclude that all closed intervals have the same cardinality? Well, we just showed that an arbitrary closed interval had the same cardinality as 0, 1. So CD also has the same cardinality as 0, 1. So by transitivity, it also has the same cardinality as AB. Now let's take a moment to think about, in these arguments, how important was it that both of them were closed intervals? Would it be okay if they were both open intervals at every stage? In fact, yes, it would be fine. The exact same arguments tell you that all open intervals have the same cardinality. Now let's push this a little bit further. The cardinality of the reals is the same as the cardinality of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Can you think of a bijection that goes from one of these sets to the other? One example would be arctan, the inverse function of tan. So this is a bijection from the reals to that open interval. Now this is interesting because this is going from an infinite set, an infinite interval, um, that goes from minus infinity to infinity, to a sort of quote-unquote finite interval where both endpoints are finite. So this is an interesting example. Now, the rest of these are gonna be exercises for you. Show that all of these types of intervals have the same cardinality. So minus infinity to infinity, um, open AB, closed AB, op the open ray, the closed ray, and the open and closed ray from the other side. So we've already done the first three, we've already shown that the first three all have the same cardinality. Now it's up to you to show the rest. Well, actually we showed that these two have the same cardinality, but we showed that secretly in the Cantor Schroeder Bernstein section. So you can review that if you want. All right, let's take a moment to reflect. If two intervals have the same cardinality, do they have the same length necessarily? Also, wait, we showed that the evens and the natural numbers have the same cardinality. Shouldn't it have been that the cardinality of E was strictly less than the cardinality of the naturals, since the evens are a subset of the naturals? All right, thank you very much, and have a great day.